Do not repeat these seven mistakes that I did in medical school. I literally wasted so much time doing the wrong things. Ugh, the regrets. So you're thinking about going to medical school or you're about to start medicine, then you need to watch this video. These are some things that I really wish someone told me not to do when I was in your shoes. The most costly mistake that I did in medical school is trying to memorize everything by active recall and space repetition alone. No, no, no. I know what y'all be thinking like, what the heck, isn't that what all productivity gurus be preaching? Let me show you why it doesn't work for medicine. Right now I'm three years out of medical school and I'm studying for the MRCP exam, which is an exam for doctors who want to become physicians. It's a pretty big exam that tests you on clinical knowledge, assuming that your basic knowledge from medicine school it's pretty good. I'm really struggling with my revision now not gonna lie because I'm wasting so much time revisiting topics that I should have known by now and that's all because I've wrote learn most of medical school to sit exams to get good grades. So my foundational knowledge is really weak and I've probably forgotten like 80% of my degree. Active recall and space repetition are good for certain things they're great for simple facts and only retain it for a short period of time. They're not great for a higher level of learning. So what I was missing in medical school was actually encoding. Encoding is the process where you learn something new, you try to really understand what's going on, and then you relate this new piece of information back to a prior knowledge to see the big picture of how things connect and that's super important in medicine. This also makes it stick in your working memory for much longer and you're less likely to lose it later. Not gonna lie, this does take a lot longer than active recall and space repetition, but it's worth it because medicine is a lifelong learning career. The cool thing is that what you learn in the lectures now as an undergrad will become useful to you when you're practicing as a doctor in the future. So make sure you learn the material properly the first time round so you don't end up like me. <laughs> But that said, there are definitely things in medicine that I would skimp out on, which leads to the next thing that I wish I didn't do. Mistake number two is trying to learn absolutely everything in medicine. I'm sure you understand this feeling better than anyone else. When you first start med school, everything just feels so damn important. Like you go into a lecture with a hundred lecture slides and I felt like I needed to know everything on the slides really well. But as with anything in life, the Pareto's principle or the 80-20 rule applies. Not all information are made equal. Some are high yield and some are very low yield. Learning all the attachment points of every single forearm muscle, low yield, unless you want to be a surgeon. Learning the brachial plexus and its clinical implications, high yield. This was a concept that was introduced to me by a top top student who was a year ahead of us in medicine. And how you tell whether something is high yield or low yield is through a little bit of experience and some detective skills. I talk about more in this video on how to use Pareto principles to get the best grades. So make sure you check it out. Now 30% of you guys are going to feel attacked by what I'm about to say next. So the third mistake is writing my notes on pen and paper. Before you feel your blood pressure rising and feeling a notch defensive, let me show you why. This is the single function that you need in medicine. I wrote half of my pre-med notes on pen and paper and placed them neatly in these great ring binders, but the problem is I can't find them now. Medicine is pretty long and I think I've said this already and even as a doctor now I still look back to my old notes that I've written eight years ago. You know sure I could find it on the internet again but did you just waste all that effort and time writing notes to later not use it. I know that my notes are tailored to me and how I understand and process that information. Searching on Wikipedia is just not as yieldful as if I were to search my own notes because I know exactly what I'm looking for and I do know that handwriting is better for visual learning and encoding so I'm not saying that you give up on those because I still do my maps on paper but everything else searchable is on digital notes. Now I have this whole playlist here dedicated to digital note taking if you want to try it out or you think that you're a beginner at it make sure you check this playlist out. If you learned something new from this video make sure you hit that like button for me. Mistake number four is not organizing my notes intentionally. So if you're still organizing your notes like this then 
you really need to stop. Not only does this make revision hard later, it's also very ineffective for learning and encoding. For example, to learn acute coronary syndrome, you need to learn about the anatomy of the coronary arteries, pathophysiology of how a heart attack actually occurs, the ECG of how it will look like, and how you treat it with drugs. So the problem in med school is that all of these things are covered in like 10 or 20 lectures where it should really be covered at once because it's really just one topic. But you cannot understand acute coronary syndrome if you are missing any one of these parts. That's why it's really important to structure your notes via the topic instead of the dates that you were given the lectures. That way you are sure to be building a fortress of knowledge. And this is otherwise also known as the Habian theory, which is evidence-based practice for retaining information. You're constantly linking new ideas to old ideas so that you really strengthen your existing knowledge. Mistake number five is wasting valuable study resources. Back in med school, during my clinical attachments on the ward, I'd try to stay as little as possible in the hospital and trying to leave as early as I could. And I'd always go to my team and be like, oh, you know, I've got a lecture at two o'clock when I actually didn't and skimmed off because I didn't feel that it was valuable to spend my time on the ward. And looking back now, I did not realize that was a grave mistake. I was so stupid because patients are your best study resources. I didn't realize how much of an impact these patients had on me until I was studying for exams. So if you ask me, what is heart failure? I don't give you a black and white definition from my notes. What actually comes up in my head is Mr. A who is in hospital because he cannot manage his chores from breathlessness. He has really poor sleep because he wakes up in the middle of the night gasping for air and he only sleeps in the lazy boy because he cannot lie flat. The knowledge sticks so much better and you just do not have the same effect from being at the lecture theatre or from just learning from textbooks. Knowing this, I hope that you get the most out of your clinical attachments. Stay on a ward for as long as possible, be curious to learn, and if you're interested and you're not entitled or obnoxious, doctors like me are more likely to want to bring you to meet patients with great signs so you can learn from them too. Now the biggest regret that I have is actually mistake number six. I only focus on academic grades. Y'all need to hear this, once you're in med school, ain't nobody gonna talk about your grades. This obviously depends on which medical school you go to or which country you practice in, but in New Zealand, being academically smart alone actually makes it harder to get into training programs to become a specialist that you want because you've got nothing else on your CV. So while you're slaving away in med school studying, remember what actually matters. Doing extracurricular activities and building connections are far more important than your grades in the real world. So what this could look like is reaching out to departments that you're interested in to do research, attending conferences to start connecting with people that you want to become in the future. It's also continuing your hobbies, doing sports, leadership, all those good stuff. Here's the next mistake that I still feel really bitter about today that I wish I didn't do in med school. When you're in medical school, you're likely to see a lot of your non-med friends having a lot of fun. You know, they're going to that party, they are hanging out after lectures, and they're going on that cool road trip while you're stuck in the library studying. Now that I'm nearing 30, the more I think about this. We only live our 20s once, as important as med school is, as important as being a doctor is. It certainly will become a big part of your identity, but do not let it consume your whole life. You're not just a med student, you're not just a doctor. They only make up a small part of who you are. If no one tells you this, I will. Go to that party, go to that road trip that finally made it out of the group chat. I'm still regretting that I didn't go to those because they're likely going to be my core memories and those are a hundred times more valuable in the big scheme of things. I've always had problems with tunnel visioning and really struggle to look at the big picture. I always get sucked into what 
everyone else is doing in my little medic bubble that I forget what's truly important. This year I've taken a whole year off medicine to do digital nomading while traveling around the world and it's put a lot of things in a new light and a new perspective. Yeah, live your 20s well. If you're still anxious about starting medical school and you want to know how to best prepare for it, make sure you check out this playlist next on all the medical resources that you need for med school. For more videos on medicine and how to get to your A game, make sure you subscribe to my channel.